Welcome back to the Mascoutin Valley Railroad. If you guys are first timers to this channel, why don't you click subscribe and we can get you model railroad updates and you can see the progress and follow along with us as we build this thing from the ground up. This week we're going to be going and laying track on the junction module. We're changing up the format a little bit. Instead of me just telling you what I did, I'm actually going to be showing you what I did. So as the movie rolls along here, feel free to go ahead and comment on how you would do things or if you have any questions do do leave a comment below I always get back to you and I love hearing the feedback so sit back and enjoy All right, here's a list of things that we're going to need to complete this project tape measure uh, t-pins glue straight edge pencil and a wire brush and of course a cup of coffee what we're going to do first here is we're going to go ahead and pick out our turnout um, for the junction and what we're going to also do is measure right find the center of the uh, end plate um, all Fremo's uh, connecting end plates you want the track to be in the middle of the end plate per the rules um, for this particular end plate it's 24 inches wide so it's going to be 12 inches right in the center I'm going to go ahead and pick out a number eight pico turnout here um, for the junction and then we're gonna look at our Fremo guidelines here to see where we can place that there are some rules as to where a turnout can line up recommended practices and there's actually standard rules um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark it about two inches back from the from the edge of the module here and position our turnout just ahead of that so we have enough clearance to put the connecting rails in. Now we're going to go ahead and make sure that we got the uh, positioning on the through frog good and right in the middle of the track on the, on the through line. Now we're going to go grab our straight edge here and we're going to mark the, the center line of the through trackage. Take our pencil, run it right down the line, carry it all the way through to the yard module. Alright, we'll just kind of place that back in there. Yeah, it looks like everything looks pretty good. Alright, so right now it looks like we got I'm going to mark the ends here of the turnout just to see where it's going to end up and then kind of get the path started on. But hey, first, first stage completed. We place the turnout. Now let's mark the other edge of the module. I'm going to take my handy dandy speed square. Can't live without that tool. And we're just going to go ahead and take our straight edge and then line it up right where we want the center of the end plate to be and we're going to just carry out a line and that's going to be essentially the straight part of the Ashland Oshkosh so we need to take a look back at the Fremo rules here because before you come to an end plate you have to have at least six inches of straight trackage. So as we come around the corner here we need to make sure that our radius um, tangent is is done at the six inch mark there. So we got our marking our turnout here and then we built this template to kind of create a line um, as you can see here for the diverging track. And just a good it's a good thing to have a radius template all together for for any model railroading that you're doing I just made that out of hardboard all right so now that we got the diverging route pretty much um, set up here we're just gonna make sure it fits the template and it's a 36 inch radius there yep things look good so we're going to go ahead and draw that line. Just finish that out. 
and mark, just make sure our six inches is marked there on the end. That way it's nice and straight when it comes off onto the next module. All right, so now we're gonna put a corner and a kink into the through route. As you can see here, the little yellow line there. I'm gonna go from the through route, put a little radius in there. I think this one's at 42 inches. Then we're gonna have a straight piece kick off of that. We're actually gonna hit our end plate on this at, at an angle. So it won't be straight, but we're not gonna be using this to connect to any other modules. This will be just hooked up to the home layout. <clears throat> so now we're going to carry out the straight part. And voila, we have our track lines down. I added the yellow lines here uh, just so you guys can see what we're where we're drawn because it didn't show up very well on the phone in the video recording. All right, so now we're laying roadbed here. And we're just gonna go ahead and size things up first before we actually weld it. I love using T-pins to hold things into place. Um, so I recommend going out and getting T-pins um, to get them at any office supply area and Walmart or um, Target you know they even your hobby shop or Hobby Lobby or something like that will have to so we'll go ahead and just follow the trace line on the phone um, put the center of the cork along the center line and stick in a t-pin Rinse and repeat. One of the things I like to do is pre-cut all my cork roadbed um, before I glue it down. That way I'm not rushing um, when I have glue laying on the foam. So what we're going to do here is uh, kind of set up the diverging route for the turnout here. And we're going to go ahead and pre-cut the cork. So I'm just going to trade in some turnouts here before we make the final decision on what we want. We're going to just kind of mark it on the cork on the through route just to kind of see how things are going to play out. So what I like to do is take a straight edge and follow the the through route all the way down on the edge. And I take a Sharpie or a magic marker. Um, I know a lot of people are worried about bleed through stuff like that. I'm not. Um, I just, it's extra weathering in my, in my opinion. So then what I do here is I go ahead and take a hobby knife and I'll lightly um, go through the line with the knife blade and making sure that I keep the reverse bevel edge so that angle um, so that way the cork from the diverging route meets up with the through route and it looks very nice so I take it and do a reverse angle on the bevel of the through route and it takes a few passes but I go ahead and get it and then we have a seamless connection here with the cork. So just remember to keep that bevel in mind when you're cutting the cork. Otherwise, your, your road bed's gonna look a little funny. And then I take my T-pin and uh, stick it right in place where I want it. Love those T-pins.
And it's the same process here for the other side. Get my magic marker out. And this time I'm just gonna eyeball here because it's kinda on a corner so the straight edge isn't gonna work. But you just lightly, lightly mark the line. And then take your hobby knife and very carefully cut that bevel into the cork. I use a lot of passes um, because I've had a lot of bad luck or if I press too hard I'll rip the cork or the blade ends up in my finger and that's usually the end of the day so all right now we got our cut and we're gonna go ahead and just jam it in here and as you can see doesn't look too bad nice and smooth all right back with our sharpie here we're gonna start tracing the outline of where the cork is I use a thin point or felt tip marker for this just so happens to be a sharpie I like to trace the outline of the cork um, that way I'm not trying to follow a center line that has a bunch of glue on it um, so I go ahead and trace the outsides trace them all don't miss anything don't want to have blobs of glue just wandering all over your foam. This is actually probably taking longer than it should. I'm really being thorough about this, but you can just whip these lines right down. Alright, so to glue this stuff down, I take a wire brush. I'm going to pull up the cork that I have T-pinned down and you'll be able to see the trace lines here once I pull the cork back. Wire brush is important because what we need to do is rough up the cor or rough up the foam. That way it gives the glue some teeth to kind of grab onto um, and, then, and that way the cork won't come popping off. So you can see the lines there. So what I do is I just kind of rough up the cork or excuse me the foam, rough up the foam between the lines and I'm not pressing real hard. All I want to do is just create like a you know, a rough edge here. I'm not gouging the foam, I'm just kind of nice and easily going back and forth. So we're going to take some tight bond here. I'll get my hand out of the way so you can see the label. Tight bond too, wood glue. It's all that I use. I, you know, some people love it, hate it, whatever. This is what I use. Um, never had a problem with it. And my favorite part about model railroading is getting dirty. You just use your finger and smooth it out. You could use a putty knife or something like that, but who's got the time for that? Finger works just fine. So once we get the glue all smoothed out, you just keep it inside the lines that you traced earlier, and bada bing bada boom, you're gluing down roadbed. And of course, T-pins to hold it in place. So the next part here, which I feel is very underrated, is sanding the cork down. Um, some of the cork that you get from the store has kind of a weird edge on the bevel. Um, it's not real smooth, so you want to get rid of those rough burr edges on both sides of the bevel. Um, and then do the whole module. Make sure that you're not missing any of the edges. You want a nice smooth bevel, you don't want some weird cliff jagged edge kind of hanging on because uh, that's not realistic and then I also sand 
when I'm done with both sides, as you can see, I'm struggling with the sanding sponge here, but um, I like to sand the tops of the cork too, just to give the track a nice, even uh, surface to lay on. So as you can see here, once I finish trucking along, I'll go ahead and start sanding the tops down. Um, I think this is a really important part of the whole track laying process. You know, it's the foundation of what the track's laid on, and it's important that it's smooth, um, and it's important that it, it looks decent so when you end up ballasting and stuff and doing scenery, it doesn't, doesn't look like trash. All right, so now we got all the roadbed sanded. We're going to go ahead and start uh, positioning turnouts. Um, I'm a measure multiple times cut once type of person, so you've probably seen me lay out this turnout four or five times in different spots, but I wanted it to be 100% accurate because when we lay it down and glue it down, that's it. That's where it's going to be. So mark out all the ends of the turnout, and I also mark out the throw bar because I don't. I want to keep glue away from that when we get cooking here. Um, so, so my throw bar works and doesn't get stuck in the glue, because that's a problem. All right, so we're just gonna piece in some flex track here. Um, I use micro engineering flex track. Some people like to use Atlas. I I like the micro engineering because it kind of holds the curve. Um, it's a little stiffer, and I feel that the details is a little better than the Atlas. Um, but it's a Ford versus Chevy kind of thing. It's either you love it, you love microengineering, or you hate it. So what I like to do here is uh, remove the ties from underneath. So I take a sprue cutter and I'll cut out the ties so I can slide the rail joiners in because I have an awful time with rail joiners. Um, I'm sure I'm not the only one. So I'll just take my sprue cutter and cut off a couple of ties and I'll save them for later. And we'll glue those back underneath when, once the track's all in place. So as you can see here, probably going to have to trim the track up a little bit. So I use a Zuron rail nipper. Um, and I'll mark it first with the Sharpie. And then I'll come in with my rail nipper and zap the edges. put my finger over the edge there, make sure I don't have a piece of rail go flying across the room, and then just snip snip. Alright, so we got all the stuff T-pinned down in place, and I think we're ready to start soldering the joints. I like to solder my joints, because um, the mechanical connection is okay with the with the rail joiners, but I feel that you get a lot more conductivity for the electricity um, running through the rails if you solder your joints. Plus, it provides a nice rigid joint. As you can see here, I'm gobbing on the flux. Um, I flux everything, and I abuse the flux. I put probably too much on but at the end of the day it does nothing but help your solder joint. Two rules in life, keep your eye on the ball and always use flux. Alright, so I got split screens here so you can kind of see um, how I'm soldering this up. I'm just placing my soldering iron on the joint and then come in with the solder afterwards, heat it up, and then I'll just make sure that any, any uh, flux or solder is all nice, nicely flowed through the joint and nice and smooth. <coughs> Don't want it to look too nasty.
And then always clean your soldering iron here. Dip it in the flux and then wipe it off. And then come back in and do another joint. Now it's time to secure the track to the roadbed. I like to use good old construction adhesive. It's $2 a tube, you can get it at Ace Hardware. Notice I'm keeping the adhesive away from the throw bar for the turnout, which I have clearly marked here on the foam. And then we're gonna go ahead and uh, just lay a bead of construction adhesive all over the, all over the cork. As you can see, I'm probably a novice with the caulk gun. It was, I never passed that course in college, caulk 101. Anyways, so I go ahead and take my putty knife and just smooth it out. You don't want gobs and gobs and gobs of adhesive on there. You just need a real thin layer. So I probably have too much, you know, laid down in the bead, but, you know, we can always scrape it off. As you can see here, I'm starting to smooth the rest of it out. And I'll come in with the putty knife and just hammer out the rest of it here. This is kind of time sensitive because the thinner you spread this stuff, the quicker it dries. So one module's worth is probably all you should bite off. Don't don't lay 48 miles of track because you're you're caulk will dry before you have a chance to lay it down and then just carefully lay down the assembled track work on the adhesive make sure everything's in place you can use t-pins to hold things in place if you'd like to I am making very sure everything's in place you don't want to have things hanging off your roadbed or kinks in your track or anything like that. This is the time to check your quality. Very important. All right, let's get some T-pins in there. And we'll make sure the turnout's good. We'll make sure the throw bar still functions. Looks like I missed from gluing it down, which is good. And, of course, more T-pins. And we'll add a weight to hold it down. I put weights across the whole um, track area here that we laid today, so I put more than just one can of paint down. But anything works. Cans of soup, cans of paint, anything heavy just to hold it in place.
I think this is my favorite part is testing the track after we got it all laid down. I must have tested <laughs> the junction module here for about a half an hour just shoving or Jenny's back and forth. I love doing this stuff. Anyways, if you guys have any comments or questions or any tips on how you would do stuff a little differently, please put them in the comment section below. I love hearing your feedback. And if you guys haven't yet, feel free to subscribe. That way you guys can follow along on the progress of this model railroad being built from the ground up. As always, thanks for watching. And until I see you next time, keep her in notch aid.